everyone, my name is Max. I am uh, Sumax2004 on eBay. I'm the seller of this uh, Omega 307 sewing machine. So I've been uh, repairing sewing machine for the past 17 years and I've been selling sewing machines on eBay for the past 16 years since 2004. And uh, so the point of this video is to make a complete instructional video on how to use this Omega 307 sewing machine. So if you just bought a, a sewing machine from me, congratulations for, uh, for your purchase. This video is for you, to teach you everything there is to know about this sewing machine. And uh, if you haven't bought a machine yet and you're just looking to buy one, uh, this video will give you a pretty good explanation of what can be done with this sewing machine and how to use it. Uh, so, ever since I've been uh, repairing sewing machines, I've always found that I like it a lot more the older sewing machines compared to the newer one. The, the older machines, they are much tougher than the, the new one. They're all made in metal. I'm talking about machines like 40, 50, 60 years ago. These machines, they will outlast any human lifespan, it can last a hundred years because it's all metal, uh, it's very solid, it's more simple. Uh, sure, all the new machines, they all have all these fancy stitch that can be useful, but honestly, 95% of people, what they use is straight stitch and zigzag. Okay, so why am I talking about old sewing machine? Because this is not an old sewing machine, it's a brand new machine. Uh, it's because this machine, the way it's made, designed, pretty much made like an old sewing machine, like a 40-50 years old Japanese machine. This is pretty much a copy of this machine. And this machine, they are the most reliable machine. Uh, they are very simple, very strong, durable. And uh, this machine is very versatile also. You can, you can use it for leather, you can use it for thick materials, you can sew uh, regular sewing like cotton, polyester. Uh, you can do all these things with this machine. Uh, the maximum thickness to use this machine for is 3 16 of an inch. That's what I say on the eBay ads, but you can actually sew a little bit higher than this. It's not guaranteed that it will do a perfect stitch when you go higher than 3 16 of an inch, but most often it will work well, even if you go slightly higher. Uh, the only material you might have problem with this machine is very, very thick leather, like uh, dark color leather, which is very very dense, you might have some problem with this. But other than this, any kind of material, it will sew well. So uh, let's get started with the instructional video. Alright, so you've just received uh, your sewing machine. So the first thing to do when you get the machine, the first part is to uh, wind the bobbin. So just place an empty bobbin here on the bobbin winder on top, push it right, and then you need to unscrew the clutch knob here, so you just hold the hand wheel like this and unscrew it, so when that's done, only the hand wheel is going to turn when you make a bobbin. So just place back A spool of thread here. First step, pass it through this thread guide right here. Then you pass it around this little part here, that's to give tension to the thread. And then just insert it in one of the hole of the bobbin. Once it's done, you can uh, press on the pedal and you keep the thread here. And keep a finger here to prevent the, the bobbin from uh, jumping. And while holding this, the thread will break and it will just make the bobbin and then stop automatically after. So our bobbin is done, just cut the thread and once it's done, just tie back the clutch knob and you're done. Alright, so uh, I've just did my bobbin, so now I just have to place it in the bobbin case 
and place back the bobbin case in the machine. So there's two sides you can put the bobbin in, but there's a good side and a wrong side. The good side is when the bobbin turns clockwise when it's in the bobbin case and the wrong side is when it turns counterclockwise so you need to insert it so that the bobbin will turn clockwise and that will prevent the bobbin from ever jumping and causing some little trouble while, while you're sewing if you ever place it in the wrong side the machine will still work but the bobbin might be jumping once in a while and creating you some little problems so I'm gonna place it here just drop the bobbin in and now see I'm, I'm turning on a thread and you can see it's turning clockwise so that's the good side you have to place the bobbin so after this just place the thread in the little crack here you can block the bobbin with the finger and just pull on the thread so the thread comes out here once it's done there's a little door on the bobbin case little handle so you just pull it and you grab it like that so while you hand it with the handle uh, it's not gonna fall it prevents it from falling so this little pin here has to go up I'm gonna lift the machine so you can see where how I'm inserting it and there is like a little hole here and that's where the pin has to go so you just push it to maximum and then you let go of the little handle and then it's place and if the bobbin case ever gets out that means it was not pushed completely to the uh, to the bottom so when it's well placed it will never get out all right so now our bobbin is made and installed in the bobbin case the bobbin case is in the machine so before threading the machine I will show you how to change the needle now every once in a while you have to change the needle uh, sometimes you might break the needle or the needle might bend in this case you have to change it and even if the needle is not bent or damaged you might still have to change it once in a while because the point of the needle will get less sharp with time personally I just hear it when I'm sewing with a machine if, if the needle is not sharp I just hear the sound it makes while the needle goes through the material so we're gonna change the needle here uh, this is a correct needle for the machine that's a 15 by 1 needle these are the only needle that will fit on the machine 15 by 1 nothing else will fit uh, you can choose many sizes you want like number 11 number 12 number 14 number 18 with this machine you you have a pack of number 18 needle and number 14 the number 18 is for the thick materials and number 14 is for the regular material so this is number 18 I'm just gonna unscrew the needle clamp a little bit not too much because if you unscrew it too much it will fall down so just maybe half a turn a full turn you can play with the needle so it gets out so now the needle is out and if you look at the needle here there is a flat side and a round side it's very important that the flat side has to go on the right uh, right now the camera is facing to the face of the machine so it's like you would be looking at the machine in front of you so the flat side goes on the right of the machine always if it's not on the right side and it's on the wrong side you will have problem with the machine and the machine is not gonna sew well and also when you insert the needle be sure to push it on the top to maximum if the needle is not pushed up to maximum uh, you will have problem also because the machine will be out of timing so place the, the needle to the top completely and the flat side on the right side this way you won't have problem with the machine and tight well with your finger the needle clamp and then you're ready to go all right so now our bobbin is done it's in the bobbin case which is in installed in the machine and uh, I've just put a new needle on the machine so now it's time to thread the, the sewing machine first thing you do before threading the machine you lift up the pressure foot you always need to lift up the pressure foot when threading the machine because this releases the tension on the machine and it makes it easier to thread the machine 
So uh, once it's done, you take your thread, place it in the first thread guide here, in this little hole. Uh, this little circle here we use to wind a bobbin. You don't use it for to thread the machine. It's only to for winding bobbins. So you just place it in this thread guide here. Just roll it around so it goes inside naturally, and then you place the thread inside the two tension disc with your right hand you block the bobbin here and you push up so that it will engage the check spring when it engages the check spring you will you will hear a little click first thread has to go behind the check spring and then you push up and then it does a little click and then the thread is locked up there with the check spring so this is just a close up for threading the tension uh, I will be doing this one hand so forgive me so you can see now that the thread goes in between the tension disc it really has to go in between them because if it's outside either in front of them or behind them the machine won't work well it won't have any tension so and then you can see it's right below the spring I'm gonna block the spool and just click it so now it, the spring is engaged after this place it in the take up lever here and then in this thread guide here then this other thread guide here and there's a last thread guide here that you just roll it around and it will just goes inside naturally and finally you thread the needle from the left to the right always from the left to the right so you take your thread place it below the pressure foot and behind and then with your left hand you can hold the thread and you make a complete turn with the hand wheel with your right hand and whenever you turn the hand wheel always turn the hand wheel towards yourself not the other side because the sewing machine only works in one direction it doesn't work in the other direction so always turn towards yourself uh, that is counterclockwise so turn slowly counterclockwise and you stop when the needle is completely at its highest position so right now it's at its highest position so we have picked up the thread so you just push it up and you see the bottom thread right here so you take the bottom thread and you take both thread put them back underneath the pressure foot and behind and try to leave like about six inch at least of thread because if it's too short uh, it won't sew well so just leave about six inch of length put them back and now you're ready to sew all right so here's the few adjustment of the machine uh, the most important one is the tension here normal tension is between four and six uh, the tension required can be different on different kind of material like thicker material will require a higher tension and thinner material will require a lesser tension here are a few tension problem in this case the tension is set too high so uh, this is the top part of our, the fabric and you can see that the stitch on top does not look good uh, on the bottom part it does look good however uh, another explanation for this might be the maybe the bobbin case tension is not threaded so either the tension the top tension is set too high and you need to lower it or the bobbin case uh, little tension is not threaded and you need to thread it so that could be either explanation for this here it's the opposite problem uh, the tension the top tension is set too low and it's causing the stitch to have some loops under the fabric as you can see in the right picture 
the left picture is the top side is that it does not look very good but it's less bad than the bottom side of the fabric so in this case either the tension is not shredded properly or the tension is set too low and you need to increase the tension to fix this problem and for the last picture here we have a very good tension uh, you can see both the top of the fabric and the bottom side of the fabric uh, looks pretty good uh, the stitch looks very equal on both sides uh, when the tension is good you look at both sides of the fabric and the stitch looks pretty much the same on each side so let's jump to the feed dog selector that's right here so right now it's set on the right side at 2 here uh, this is where the feed dogs are at the highest uh, and you want them to be at the highest for most material, especially leather. And you can push it on the left side like this, so they will be lower. Like when I sewed this material, this is a more fragile material, so I put them lower, so it makes, uh, so it gives a better result on this material. So if you have some thin, fragile material, it's best to put it maybe not completely on the left, but like here it's good so it will be uh, better for delicate fragile material like this uh, after that we have the stitch length right here so for for leather put it at maximum at four you want a longest the longest stitch for leather uh, for regular material you can place it between two or three more close to two that that makes a regular normal stitch and this right here is the reverse just push on it hold hold it and as long as you keep your finger on it the machine will work in reverse soon as you stop pushing on it will keep uh, it will keep working forward this is the zigzag lever uh, right now it's set at zero so it will make a straight stitch when you place the zigzag level at five it will make a zigzag stitch at its widest and you can place it more on the right side like in the middle here it will do a, a thinner zigzag so place it here for zigzag and zero for straight stitch and when you're at the straight stitch uh, this is our needle position selector right now it's at M for middle and you can place it left middle or right so the needle will change position depending on how you adjust this and uh, you have the bobbin winder here now it's disengaged on the left right it's engaged left disengaged this is the clutch knob right here you block the hand wheel and you untight it like that so when you do make a bobbin only the hand wheel will move and when you're ready to sew you tie it back tie it well especially for leather and now the whole machine will be engaged and uh, finally you have the darner here now it's pushed down, but if I push on this, it will come up. So this is to give pressure on the pressure foot, and you want to have it down most times. Especially for thick materials, you want strong pressure on the pressure foot. So at mo most of the time, keep it down. Uh, maybe for more delicate fabric like this one, maybe you can push it halfway so you have a little bit less pressure. Uh, it might give a better result so that's the adjustment for that and right here at the back there's the light switch you can turn it on like this and uh, that's about it so for sewing thick materials uh, the needle I recommend and I provide it with the this machine is the number 18 Singer needle it's 15 by 1 needle uh, size 18 is bigger than the, the 14 and this will work for leather for thick materials in general and uh, the thread I recommend is uh, number 69 nylon thread I've never used a bigger thread on this machine so I can't comment whether or not it will work well or not probably it will but honestly with this thread you can do any any kind of thick material if I try to cut it like this I'm going to cut my finger before I'm able to cut the thread. It's really solid thread. So number 69 nylon thread. All right. So now our machine is uh, threaded. Uh, we have a brand new needle installed on the machine, 
and a bobbin full of thread in the bobbin case. So we're ready to sew with the machine. Here, uh, my first sample is uh, two layers of small leather. So just, just going to place it underneath the pressure foot. Press down the pressure foot. Stitch length is at four. So uh, whenever you're sewing leather, you need to always engage the machine. You need to engage the needle inside the material with your hand first because leather is not like regular material, it's tougher to sew so just engage it always turn the hand wheel towards yourself so that the needle goes through the material and then you can press on the foot controller and you just guide the material with your hand the machine will carry the material by itself you can cut the little thread here Engage the needle and go with the electricity, just like that. So it's pretty easy to sew this, this sample. Let's try an, uh, a thicker sample. So here I have three layers of a little bit thicker leather. This is pretty much 316, pretty close to it. So uh, let's try this. As always with leather, engage the needle with your hand first. And also, when you're sewing leather, you need to really tight the, the clutch knob here because it has to be really tight well so the machine will always engage the material. So tight it well, block the hand wheel here and tight it. And then engage the hand wheel with your hand like this. Once it's inside the material, you can go with electricity. And when you sew that tick, you need to press all the way down on the foot controller. You cannot really sew at slow speed for this thickness. The machine will not engage it. So press all the way down. If you want to sew at the slower speed, what I recommend doing is to have your hand on the, on the hand wheel, always. And then you can start it with your hand in the beginning. Or just engage a needle first and start it. And you can use your hand as a brake. It's totally safe, there's nowhere your hand can get caught in the hand wheel. So keep your hand there, use it as a brake and the, the machine will go slower because your hand is there. But you need to press all the way down on the pressure foot when sewing that tick. See I'm sewing slower now using my hand. So this way it's easier for you. If I remove my hand it goes faster. So yeah even that thickness it fairly easy to sew it. That's that's very thick. Most sewing machines they won't do that. So now we'll be sewing regular material. So I've retreaded the machine with a regular thread and I put the number 14 needle, which is the needle I recommend for regular materials. So now uh, I'm ready to sew. Just gonna place my uh, cotton fabric here. Uh, whenever you're sewing leather, place uh, the stitch length at maximum at four. And when you're sewing uh, regular material, place it between two and three. That's a pretty normal stitch. And now we're ready to go. And here you don't really need to engage the needle manually like you would be doing for leather. And it's much easier to control the speed of the machine. You can sew at the lower speed. You don't have to go all the way down on the, on the foot controller for regular material. So that's a pretty good stitch. 
a little bit too long so I'm just gonna shorten to two the stitch length. There we go. Alright, now still testing the machine for regular material. I'm gonna try it on uh, some stretch fabric. Uh, this is extensible, so this kind of material can be hard to sew for many sewing machines. Uh, many sewing machines will skip stitches on these uh, these materials. However, this machine it handles them pretty well and doesn't skip stitch on them. So let's try it. So it does a pretty good sh stitch on uh, on this fabric, and as I can see now, there's, it hasn't skipped any single stitch while sewing that, and that's pretty good because, like I said, many sewing machines will skip stitch on these kind of material. If you ever try this machine and you, it skips stitches on that on any stretch fabric, I recommend uh, buying. Uh, size num uh, size 14 needle for stretch fabric, which is a ballpoint needle. Uh, this needle is uh, will be more able to sew through the stretch fabric without skipping any stitches. However, I've just used a regular 14 needle on this extensible fabric, and it doesn't skip any stitch. So if if your machine doesn't skip any stitches on the stretch fabric. You don't need to buy this needle. If it ever happens, then you can just buy them. It, it will be uh, more effective at sewing through the stretch fabric. Alright, so now I will be sewing a zipper with the machine, with the zipper foot. So first thing to do is to remove the zigzag pressure foot here. So just unscrew slightly the thumb screw here. You can use a screwdriver or your hand, but it's easier with a screwdriver. And we'll will just fall down no need to completely remove the screw and now you can take it out fairly easily and you just install the zipper foot at its place and screw back the thumb screw place the thread behind the foot like with the zigzag foot and now on the zipper foot you have an orange screw in the back that's to adjust the zipper foot. So now I just unscrew it a little bit and now I can swing it back and forth like this. So right now I want it to be on the left side. So I place it left, I screw it a little bit, not completely. And then you can just take the needle down a little bit to see where the needle is going to go. So right there it's perfect. So now I can tie it back. So the needle will come in this little hole here and it won't break on the on the zipper foot. So now we're ready to sew. Okay, so now our zipper foot is installed. The needle goes on the left of the zipper foot and that is to sew the right side of the zipper foot. So the whole point of the zipper foot is that you will be able to press on the material and the zipper very close to the zipper line in the middle just like that and now I'm ready to sew so you're, I'm sewing right now very close to the zipper here so go slowly while sewing the zipper you don't want to go too fast and try to go as straight as possible Once it's done, you can lift the pressure foot, cut the thread, and then you just have to adjust the zipper foot so that the needle goes on the right side, and then you sew the other side. Mm. 
All right, so if you ever have the needle hitting the pressure foot, that's no good. You, you don't want that. So the first thing to rule out is uh, to make sure that your needle is good. If your needle is bent, it might be hitting it. So you just throw the needle away and put a place a new needle. So if you have a new needle there and it's still hitting the pressure foot, you just need to unscrew the thumb screw of the pressure foot here. Now you'll be able to swing it back and forth. So all you need to do is to place it so that it's well aligned with the needle so that you can see that the needle will go straight through the hole and after that you tight back, back the screw firmly like this and now it's well in place and the needle doesn't even come close to hitting it so here's how to adjust the, the motor belt tension here uh, having proper tension is very important for the machine to work well uh, now every machine I sell I check the tension of the motor belt before I ship it so your machine when you will receive it you won't have any problem with that will be all good however after some use uh, the motor belt will probably stretch and then it might get a little bit loose so here's how to adjust it uh, you need an adjustable wrench because this screw here the motor screw is pretty tight so you just need to unscrew it a little bit first with the wrench so maybe unscrew it a whole turn then you can use a screwdriver all right so now unscrew the screw until the motor gets loose so now it's loose so you can push the motor down or up uh, down or up so you can adjust the tension this way so place it down so you have some good tension and screw it first with the screwdriver do not tight it yet tight it with the screwdriver first and then you need to block the hand wheel with your hand here and you, we're gonna see see that's too tight when you press on the pedal and you don't even see the motor pulley turning that's too tight so you will lose speed with the machine and you will lose uh, you will lose power with the machine because it's too tight I'm gonna unscrew it and I'm gonna place it too loose to show you So same thing, hold it. That's actually almost good. So I'm gonna place it more loose for you to, to see what it's like. <coughs> see, that's way too loose. You can see the motor pulley turning almost freely. So now I'm gonna place it correctly. That's good. When you see the motor pulley turning slowly, that's good. That's what you want. So once you get that, then you can tie it back with the wrench. Tie it about a full turn with the wrench. And now you're good to go. Oiling the machine is an important thing to do and it has to be done about once a year. You need to use only sewing machine oil, no grease or any other kind of lubricant, only sewing machine oil and when oiling you just use one or two drops of oil at certain areas. The areas that has to be oiled are spots when there will be friction between two metal parts. So where two metal parts are joined together you have to oil this. So I've ident identified all the areas on the machine with red dots where you need to oil the machine so the left picture is here is the the needle bar and the needle bar link so these are very important that have to be oiled and on the right side here is the shuttle system that also has to be oiled and uh, here the this picture this is the bottom of the machine so you have to flip the machine on its back and you will see these parts and everywhere where you see a red dot you have to oil right there 
Okay, so now it's the final part of the video. That's the troubleshooting section. Uh, this is the table of content of the troubleshooting sections. Any problem you might possibly experience with the machine or here and with the solution how to fix them quickly. So uh, after this each frame will last about 10 seconds and I suggest if that's the problem you're looking for to just pause it and look how to fix it.